from the Mansion House to your house, welcome to the United Community Mansion House. Hi, welcome to the Mansion House. My name is Chelsea Sherman and I'm the Director of Guest Services here. Um, we've been working really hard over the last year, year and a half on the renovations of our guest rooms and we're really excited to show you all the work. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Comey, Director of Buildings and Grounds and I've been here 16 years and I can honestly say there's not a day that goes by that I come into this building and don't learn something new. Absolutely. I'm Tom Geiler, I'm the Director of Museum Affairs here at the Mansion House. I've been here about six months, and like Mike, I'm learning something new every day about this amazing place and the people that have lived here for over 170 years. And we're here today, we're going to talk about the historic inn here at the Mansion House. And I think one of the coolest things about the Mansion House and how it works today is it's not only a home, but it's also a historic inn, as well as a museum. So when you come here, you stay overnight at the Mansion House, you're actually spending a night at the museum. But a lot of folks say like, oh, you know, how long have people been coming to the Mansion House? And actually they've been coming here for well over 170 years. And they've actually been welcoming guests ever since 1853. Speaking of guests, this room we're in right now is actually the reception room for guests dating back to the 1860s. Guests would come here into this room and be greeted by someone who would then take them on a tour of the ground or set them up um, with dinner or entertainment. Um, one period uh, account of this room said it was a large room furnished with good Victorian furniture brought by well-to-do members. There was three large sofas, two imposing rocking chairs, all upholstered in horsehair. It had a stereopticon, ingrained carpets, lace curtains, and a large, quite worldly-looking mirror in a gilt frame. that joined images of Lincoln, Niagara Falls, and others on the walls. So I brought out a few objects here today to talk about what visitation was like. And this here is the blueprint from the 1878 edition that's known as the New House. You can see here, these are where our guest rooms are today. But in the 1870s, this was actually conceived of as another big hall or assembly room or dining room. That by the 1890s had been converted um, to guest apartments and guest rooms um, for the people that are living here and working for Oneida Limited. So um, this is what will take you into this later, but this is a wonderful look at this. But Actually, tourism was an amazing business here at the community. On the 4th of July in 1862, they had almost 2,000 people here, to the point where they actually had to make it their own little industry. They had things like refreshments for sale, um, different meal options, music and entertainment, and of course, you could always take a guided tour. And the tours were always guided because this was still a home, and they wanted you to make sure that the people who were living here, members of the other community, had their privacy. Now another visitor's guide here, this one is a bit earlier, and he tells you some of the prices here. Dinner was 60 cents, um, plain dinner, or you could have also have supper, and entertainment in the hall was only 25 cents. Indeed, when the railroad came in in the 1870s, which you can actually see where that went through today if you come to our, our trails, um, brought so many more people to the Magic House, to the point where the railroad here actually gave a reduced fare for people who coming to the Mansion House. So really, the Mansion House has always been a place for visitors, people staying overnight, eating, touring, and it's always been that way. And that's when we're so proud to have the in the Mansion House to recreate that experience for guests today. So I guess now we'll turn it over to Mike and Chelsea and we'll go down to the, uh, the new guest room. The guest rooms at the Historic Inn allow people to experience community from a historic and interpretive perspective. We offer basic amenities like um, cable TV and smart TV. We have mini fridges in each room. We have Keurigs for coffee every morning and we offer continental breakfast. That's some of the basic things that we offer just like any other ho hotel does and we'll hand it off to Mike to talk about the renovation process to get these beautiful rooms. Thank you Chelsea. Our in-house staff had to physically move all of the furniture out of all of the guest rooms in order to begin the process of renovating. So, we got together and physically moved all the dressers, desks, beds, chairs, anything you could possibly imagine that would incorporate a guest room. After that, as you can tell by the photographs, we began the tedious process of removing all the old, non-historic wallpaper. After that, we removed all the carpeting in all of the rooms in preparation for our hardwood floors, which are original, to be refinished. And during the process of the hardwood floor refinishing, 
Clinton Hardwood Floors took a little time out of their busy day to tell us about the actual hardwood we have here at the Mansion House, as you can see in this clip. Because it's uh, the oak is old growth uh, wood that was uh, you know, two or three feet in diameter trees that were cut up, you know. And uh, this wood, kind of wood is not available anymore because most of the wood that's harvested today is from Appalachia in New England. It comes from much smaller diameter trees, uh, maybe a quarter of 18 inches in diameter. So when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or even on the liquidators, you get, you get a, what's called a mixed bundle of one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, and five foot pieces, evenly mixed. You know what I mean? You get maybe each bundle of 20 square feet is a, an equal proportion of those five sizes. But you never see anything this long, you know. And also, it's a, a lot more uh, variation in the color, you know, the, the boards, you know what I mean? Because uh, you're getting so many small pieces mixed up. And, it's, it's more than 100 years old at least. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it's got another 200 years to go. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so you said on a scale of 1 to 10, this floor. Oh, it's a 10. Wow. Yeah, because you can't get any better, you know. No, that's but I mean, that just that alone. And the other thing, too, is uh, wood floors are the only floors that appreciate the value. In other words, they increase in value as time goes on. Right. Uh, this floor was. Oak was going for about a dollar a square foot 40 years ago, and now it's about four dollars a square foot today. So it's quadrupled, or no, it's doubled every 10 years. Yeah. So uh, not only is this wood the best you can get, and it's also unattainable, but it's, it's doubling in value every 10 years, and it's, and it's the only floor that will last more than 100 years. So it's, uh, wow. you know. the other thing too is. When you're restoring an old building like this, you want to try to get it back to where it was. And this is this is where it was. They, they, put it, they didn't have wall to wall carpeting because they didn't have it back then, you know. Now the whole time the renovation of the hardwood floors began in all the guest rooms, our team began the tedious process of renovating the bathrooms as well. This included removing all the vanities. Toilets, fiberglass tubs, and fiberglass tub surrounds in preparation for brand new ceramic tile flooring. And as you can see here, brand new herringbone tile tubs. Along with the bathroom renovations came the removals of old cast iron drains. Cracking, deteriorating original cast iron drains that were taken out and replaced with PVC drains as you can see by all these pictures. And after our bathroom installations were complete, our team came back into the guest rooms and began hatching and priming and prepping the walls for new finished paint and wallpaper. Out of respect for the historic nature of the building, the board hired a historic interiors consultant, Barbara Bartlett. Barbara made recommendations that paid homage to the building's features and stayed true to the historic context. Uh, some of those recommendations included this William Morris Pimpernel wallpaper, as well as the Stickley furniture that you see in here. And Stickley is such an iconic name here in Central New York. Indeed, it's one of the me meccas, the epicenters of the arts and crafts movement. Um, you had many people like Adelaide, Elsa Robineau, Gustav Stickley, um, and many others who were in this area practicing arts and crafts architecture, furnishings, wallpapers, and bookbinding. So this area was rife with all these kinds of furnishings, even back into the 1880s, 1890s, and early 20th century. Indeed, the collection at the Mansion House has a number of pieces from Stickley uh, dating back to the 1900s, as well as bound volumes here of the Craftsman, which is Gustav Stickley's magazine, uh, where he espoused his ideas of honesty and construction and dignity in labor. Um, this is a bound copy that belonged to Hilda Noyes, actually. Um, it is very rare uh, and bound, and we're really happy to have this here um, at the Mansion House so we can fully interpret uh, our guest rooms in terms of a historic night at the museum. One of the focal points of these rooms are the huge nine-foot windows. As you can imagine, you can't find drapes like this just anywhere. We had a very generous local seamstress donate her time to sewing all of the drapes in each of our guest rooms. Uh, speaking of local, we, the tile that was installed in all the bathrooms was done by a local company. The mattresses that we purchased were purchased from a family-owned business here in Cheryl. 
and um, these cabinets that house the mini fridge and TV were designed and made locally. Now that we've spent some time in the guest rooms, let's take a look at what's going on in the hallway. Hi, we're here in the hallway of our historic inn. As I mentioned before, in 1878, 1879, this space wouldn't have existed like this. It would have been a giant open room that they could have used uh, for a dining hall or an assembly hall, much like the big hall upstairs. There were just that many people here that they needed that much more space. However, it also would have been a construction site because this part of the building was never finished. Um, there were many things on the architectural plans that we have in the collection that remained unrealized. So by the 1890s, um, the need for space for overnight guests, but also people residing in the mansion house, the need for apartments, these walls were put up and bathrooms added and they became a residential units here at the mansion house. But I'm really here to tell you about a brand new exhibit we're gonna install this spring right here in this hallway. And that's gonna be celebrating the art of Jim Callway. Jim Callway was a beloved guy here in the area. He was a vice president of marketing for Oneida Limited, but he was also a really talented painter. Um, and he drew inspiration from the places he lived, especially here in upstate New York, his vacation home in Cape Cod, as well as the Gettysburg battlefields. This one here is very typical of his style. Um, it's somewhat impressionistic also, but at the same time, realistic in an Americana-like style. This is a painting of downtown Oneida, and this would have been from the perspective of Jim's father's store in downtown Oneida, sort of looking out into the townscape. We have a few dozen of these um, paintings, and we're going to be lining them in the halls. Um, these were actually displayed at Oneida Savings Bank for a lot of years, and they actually were displayed internationally through the Art of the Embassies program, where to promote democracy around the world, these paintings were shipped to places like Ghana um, and elsewhere to show the American way of life abroad. So we're really grateful to have these paintings. We're really grateful to be able to showcase them here in the historic inn. And we're so thankful to the Callot family, to Community Bank, as well as the Stickles family for making it happen and bringing these works um, to what we think are home. So stay tuned and... Um, coming to a wall near you. Tom showed a little bit of this hallway, but I wanted to mention that we did have this space redone as well as the guest rooms themselves. Um, not too long ago, there was over 60 year old wallpaper here that was stripped down and we had the walls and the trim all repainted. The color scheme that you see here was chosen to highlight the historic features of the house, like the doors and the transom windows. Um, we also had the lighting redone and that was done to better illuminate the hallway as well as to highlight the artwork, like the hallways. I do want to show off one more space. So this is room 144. This is a queen size guest room. This is another stickly piece. Um, this bed is a stickly piece. The nightstand, the carpet, this upholstered chair is a stickly piece as well as the desk. Now you'll notice that this room also has the nine foot windows with the custom drapes. They all have this same um, TV cabinet with the mini fridge. And then most of the bathrooms look the same. We have the white and gray tile with the um, gray hair and bone tile in the showers. And all new sinks and appliances in the bathrooms. And now we're gonna step into the lounge. Some additional amenities that we offer at the inn at the mansion house are our gardens, grounds, and trails. We offer the library for residents and guests to sit and read. And we have spaces like this. This is the lounge. This is a great space, too, because this is also part of the historic inn in that this was built in 1914 um, for the company uh, by a descendant architect named Theodore Skinner. So we wanted to thank you all for coming today to join us at the historic inn. But you really, you really have to come and see it to actually experience community, experience all the hard work that these guys have done um, in making an unforgettable guest experience. So please do come visit, book an overnight stay, um, and experience community with us. Thank you for being with us today, and we hope to see you soon. Come visit. <laughs>